Good morning, my creative friends, and welcome to Painting in Your PJs live with Minette. I am Dr. Minette Riordan. I'm going to click the button for Facebook here. Super excited to be on day 20 of our 21 days of intuitive art and working in a circle journal. And uh, it's been an amazing process for me personally as I have worked through this round journal using my process of write, paint, reflect in kind of a small space in these little circle pages. And today is the final prompt and tomorrow for our final day I want to really focus on putting this journal together and putting finishing touches on it. I'm looking at it going, I think maybe it needs some stitching and maybe it might need some tabs on some of the pages. So I'm sort of thinking already about today's for putting those pretty finishing touches on things for tomorrow. But what I wanted to focus on as our last prompt from this 21 days of Write, Paint, Reflect is to consider what have you learned in the past 12 months in 2023 and of the things that you've learned what do you want to carry forward with you maybe continue to grow in that area or to continue to go even deeper into learning about that i feel like there were so many learnings for me this year i feel like and i was doing some of my can the lights are crazy doing some of my own journaling before we started like I feel like in my business I learned so much and I grew personally I got closer to my purpose I feel like I did a lot of emotional heart healing this year around family relationships I learned that I could be really consistent on YouTube and I'm celebrating reaching our first thousand subscribers. I think we're at 1200. So thank you subscribers for that. And um, I learned that I love being here in the mornings where before this time, you know, I was down here creating anyway. And I have gotten so much joy out of this last year of painting in your PJs live with Manette. And so I was thinking... I think I've learned more about spiritual practices that have really nourished me and supported me over the, the past year and how much better I feel when I have a schedule and a routine and I'm really focused on managing, managing my energy more than my time, knowing when to say no, having better, better boundaries around time and energy uh, and really sinking into spending more time on what makes me feel good instead of what's draining. I'm a lifelong overachiever and alcohol, and uh, uh, not an alcoholic, sorry, workaholic. Um, and um, that's, that was a weird slip of the tongue there. But what I've noticed is that this year, I really worked on the boundaries between my love and passion for what it is that I do professionally and my need for time for myself. And I don't know that I have it all figured out or quite right, but I've had a lot of fun on the journey. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera here. And I've got this little paper doll cut out. This is from Megan Quinlan, one of her paper doll sets. And I think what I liked about this one was that it reminded me of the full moon when I got up this morning that full moon was shining so brightly and I'm loving seeing all of these chunky pages come come together. Good morning, Barbara. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I think that I want to do something with this paper doll. Again, I feel like the shape of it is resonant of the full moon energy. So we're just past the full moon. I think the the it was actually completely full on December 26, but it was cloudy here. Good morning, Trudy. And uh, and so I didn't get to see it, but it was beautiful and bright, shining in my, my window where I sat to drink my first cup of coffee this morning. And so I feel like I want a paper doll in here to honor all the things that I've learned. So I did some journaling, just, you know, sometimes I think we think, sort of morning pages style of journaling that we have to 
write, 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 write. And for some of us, writing is easy. I can sit down and fill three pages every morning. And I love my art making so much that I found myself trying to find a way to have a creative routine in the mornings that allowed for writing, painting, and that deep personal reflection that I think is so important. And so working small has been really beneficial all month long. So for this final, final prep prompt today, I want to look at, and I really love these stencils. I was going through my stash. A friend gave me these, and I haven't even um, opened these, but these funky wonky shapes felt really fun to me. I'm especially being drawn to that one, although that one may be maybe too big for the page, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to poke a couple of these out. So our prompt today is to think about what have you learned in the past 12 months that you want to celebrate or acknowledge and that you know that you want to carry forward and continue to focus on in 2024. I think sometimes women, especially Buenos Dias Blanca, women especially have a tendency to learn things, to accomplish things, to check stuff off of our list and then let it go. And we don't pause to acknowledge and celebrate ourselves. Oh, it does fit. Yay. I don't know what it is about this funky shape that's really uh, calling to me today. This was our, our page from yesterday. I'm going to take these little tags out for the moment so they don't get in the way. I did end up just adding some sweet little bits of lace that a friend gave me to these tags and I added some white highlights to the tags. So this was, these were all about how I want to feel and I'm still thinking maybe they need some words on them. Uh, so tomorrow, our last day of our 21 days is going to be all about, I'm taking those out Minette, not leaving them in all about finishing touches, tabs, stitching, and weaving it all together. And I want a little pair of scissors. Let's see if we can trim that little edge off. I don't know what it is about this shape that feels so inviting. Good morning, Judy. And as I was sitting here this morning and thinking about this journey over the past almost 21 days, and this consistent theme of creative self-reflection has been so nourishing. And I know that I'm going to really enjoy continuing to flip through the pages of this journal to remember. And so it felt important to maybe, okay, those aren't going to work with that, to maybe just take this moment to pause and think about what have we learned Right? What have we learned? So often, we talked about this yesterday when we were talking about how do you want to feel, about how often we get pulled into, let's see, I'm thinking just some fun abstract on this page. I want to start with some oil pastels this morning. We get caught up in thinking about how much there is to do or how much there is to learn, and we have all these kind of huge outrageous goals that we set for ourselves that are daunting and yet if we pause and consider what have I learned already that's going to support me in just going deeper or a little bit further <clears throat> and Trudy I was thinking about your question I missed it in the in the comments yesterday until I was done about vision boards <clears throat> and I do make vision boards or sometimes make a vision book and instead of a board, but I do, I love doing vision boards, but I do them very differently. There's some really fun ideas around how to connect uh, the feng, sh feng shui to your vision board to organize it differently. And that's been a really fun way to, to look at vision boards. But the main thing is when I create a vision board, there are no words or very few words on the board. I have seen vision boards where people have nothing but words. And when I think about intuitive collage and the intuitive creative process and how I want to use that um, as a way to capture what's beneath the surface 
of my thoughts, my way of doing vision boards is to capture exactly what we talked about yesterday, more about how do I want to feel. Sometimes it's about what do I want to have if there's a, you know, if a new house or a new car, thankfully, I don't need a new house. Gosh, no moving anytime soon on the horizon. And um, so I really look at my energy, like what's the energy that I want to have? How do I want to feel? What do I want to accomplish? And I create the vision board with all images because images are expansive. Words are limiters. When we put words on things, it doesn't leave space and opportunity for expansion. And then one of my mentors taught me something that I've always really loved is that once you create a vision board, somewhere on the vision board, to write this or something better because what we can think about right now may be constrained or small and so sometimes simply by leaning into again the visual and these simple words you know this or something better is waiting for me in the coming year so i I do love vision boards and i love to think about them a little bit differently than most people do let's see As usual, I have no idea where I'm going with this. Just getting some color and some texture down. And I'm again, I'm thinking that this is going to be maybe a fun mask on here. This feels like growth for me, these beautiful sort of leafy vines and what I love about these stencils that this could be a, a mask or I also have the inside of the the other piece to use as a stencil so I think I'm just going to play for a few minutes and I think one of the things that I learned this past year was how to just continuously be more in this intuitive space of play on a regular daily basis and how much that has supported and nourished me at the, all the levels of body, mind, and spirit. It's also meant I've made so much art this year, which feels really good, but I've also spent a lot of time sitting. And so I've needed to figure out some different ways to move my body and get outside more. <clears throat> A couple of months ago, I joined the gym with my husband. He's He joined right when we first moved here. And to get back to doing some different kinds of exercises has been really nourishing and supportive. I found a chiropractor. <clears throat> so thinking about the interconnectedness of the things that I've learned also, right, about how do my needs change? So not just how do I want to feel, but if I want to feel energetic in this space, then I need to take care of my health in order to do that. <clears throat> Am I going to do a vision board on my channel? I hadn't thought about it. Um, I will think about it. So I'm still thinking about what I want to do on, uh, so on New Year's Day, I'm going to do probably a two to three hour sort of mini retreat marathon. Um, hadn't thought about doing a vision board. I want to, to focus on creating mantras to lead us through the new year. <clears throat> and it could be vision boardy as well. So I'm just kind of noticing what I'm putting down here and it feels like I've got some energy of the sun rising over here, maybe some energy of the 
moon setting over on this side, just kind of looking at the the shapes that I've just intuitively put down on the page and I'm just trusting the process and it feels good this morning just to play with the paint, <coughs> excuse me, to not have any particular destination in mind because I think the the focal point is going to be this purple, this purple paper doll. <clears throat> my words feel jumbled. My brain feels a little jumbled this morning. So my wonderful husband got up and drove the kids to the airport at, they left just before 3 a.m. So I got up also to say goodbye. And then of course it took a while to go to sleep. And then of course I woke up at my normal early time. And so I'm not sure well, I think what I am sure of is there's going to be a nap in my future later this afternoon. All right, feeling like it needs more green in here because I'm wanting to capture some of that growth and movement. And I've got all this yellow on my palette. So I think I'm just going to get some color down on this character to start here. I'm not going to worry about staying in too much in the lines or anything because I'm going to cut it out. I've had more fun with this set of stencils from Megan Quinlan Studios on Etsy. And I think it's inspired me. I'm thinking in January, I'm gonna do something related to a month of paper dolls. It was so amazing, Barbara. They were, they came early cause Maggie got out of school early and her partner was between jobs. He starts a new job on January 2nd in Boise, Idaho. And uh, so I felt so lucky to have them for two full weeks. It was a lovely, lovely long time with them. We had fun yesterday. So here in Loveland, we have the most spectacular sculpture garden. And I didn't realize forest hadn't been. So it was a little cold and breezy yesterday, but we took time to go and visit the sculpture garden. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry, which uh, is one of my, my favorite places. I mean, it literally has hundreds of huge bronze sculptures, all different themes and styles. It's, I think, one of the largest collections of sculpture here in the United States. And so that was uh, super fun. And then we took them to one of our favorite restaurants for dinner, so we had such a fun, day yesterday as our final final day and while I of course was sad to see them go I'm also happy to have my nice quiet house back and I will miss them not being here so it's so interesting with you know a, adult children in their 20s to uh, have that I love having them here and I love when they're gone again and my get my quiet life back. Although they're so lovely and quiet, it was just such a wonderful, pleasant, pleasant visit. And uh, Brad and I had fun seeing both of our kids and their partners together and meeting Connor's partner's parents was really lovely. They were delightful and both our kids seem to have found wonderful partners who also have wonderful families. All right, a little makeup sponge here. Again, I am just playing having fun. There's no 
rhyme or reason to any of this yet. And I'm going to trust it is Barbara. Like I felt that way about Brad's family too, about how lucky I was to really enjoy my in-laws. And I hear so many horror stories about, you know, horrible mothers-in-law and I never had that. I had a wonderful, wonderful experience all the way around. Brad's family is lovely. And so that felt wonderful to get to see that. We've met Forrest's parents a few times. This is the first time we met Kelly's parents. All right, so getting a really happy, happy mess here on the page. Uh, it definitely needs some contrast. It's time maybe for some black marks on the page. And then I want to do something fun with these shapes and figure out what I'm going to do with the paper doll. And I think the full moon feels important right now because it's the time of year this is the last full moon of the year and the full moon is always about releasing what no longer serves us the new moon is always about planting the seeds of what's next and this moon we can really pause and acknowledge this is no longer serving me and i want to let this go and what a powerful time to do that right here at the end of the year with only a few days left. All right, so this is looking a little funky. So I'm curious as you're creating along with me or working on your own projects this morning, when you think about that question, what have you learned this year that you want to celebrate or acknowledge that will carry you forward? that you want to continue as you go into the coming months? Was there a life lesson or a creative skill? Maybe you learned about boundaries or consistency in your own creative routine. Maybe like me that you felt really clear and aligned with your purpose and your values this year. When you think about that question, what did you learn this year that you can celebrate and just give yourself credit for, what would that be? I'm feeling like our, our little moon-shaped face here needs some kind of a crown, but I don't know if that's going to be painted or that's way too big. Okay, we'll think about that. And come back over to this one. It's fun kind of having these two different pieces to work on at the same time. Oh, and I'm kind of liking the way this one is sitting here with this swirl. So one of my early painting teachers teaches a, a class every year about uh, picking a symbol of the year to guide and support you and for me last year it was the arrow and I did a beautiful arrow painting but I'm feeling the energy of the spiral this year and I love the both the symbolism of the spiral and the visual of the spiral because spirals can expand out and grow bigger but they can also take us in deeper into our own practice and process and so it's feeling like maybe the spiral is going to be the the symbol that guides me this year and i'm wondering if maybe 
as I close out this book that my word of the year might go here on this doll as a reminder on the journey as well. And I'm kind of digging the, the colors of all of this, but it's all feeling a little messy and mushed together. So I want to start to think about toning things back. But first, I want a little more contrast on this page over here. So this card is just floating around on my desk. I think I found it stuck inside of a book. And it has a journaling prompt on it that's a really good one. Why are you alive? Similar to what is your purpose? Why are you alive? Knowing your reasons for being makes the act of being a more graceful and joyous experience. Hmm. So no mistake that it was here. So I think maybe this is going to get tucked into the journal. I was kind of curious if maybe somehow this, yeah, that feels kind of like a fun crown for our little character here. So maybe this is going to get all connected together. Like it's amazing when we create simply using the detritus that is on our desk. I always have interesting little bits and pieces and I did a big cleanup this morning. Yeah, I don't even know um, what deck this is from or anything. I think somebody must have gifted this to me and I used it as a bookmark and it was stuck inside of that book. Something important here, maybe this is uh, somehow going to guide the creative process on New Year's Day. So definitely, definitely something to think about here. But I'm feeling like this little character wants to be part of this, which is going to give me a direction. Always, always, always. No coincidences. Okay, so let's see. Get a little black here. It's amazing how just, hi Anne, welcome, good morning. Yes, how do you want to feel is one of my favorite questions. I think it's much more important than what do you want to do. And I would consider as you look ahead to this idea of how do you want to feel, how do you feel about how do I want to ask the question? It's about how do you feel connected to your emotions? <clears throat> it's about understanding the difference between feelings and emotions. Are you comfortable naming and expressing your emotions? Many of us aren't because we weren't taught how to do that. <laughs> and it always works out perfectly for uh, those of us that are early birds and those of us that are not according to the different time zones. I am such a morning person, but after about five or six o'clock in the evening, don't ask me to do anything worthwhile. All right, where'd our leaves go? Actually, maybe some of these crosses on here. And again, just leaning into this idea of what do I want to celebrate about this past year? So it's not just accomplishments, but it's all the different ways that I felt truest and most, most authentic to myself in all the different areas of my life. I think that's just as important to consider. And I'm such a a big fan of making sure 
that we are putting time and energy into that deep self-reflection. So often at the end of the year, we tend to be <clears throat> really focused on the external, on the haves and the do's. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I've got to change this. I should be thinking about that instead of simply sitting with Look at all that I have done already so far. Let me pause and just acknowledge everything that's happened this year, how we have moved through learning new things, how we have moved through experiences that were challenging, how we've moved through grief, So taking a moment to really acknowledge all those experiences from this last year. And I think doing this just reminds us that we have more strength, more resilience, more support. I think it helps us lean into gratitude for our experiences. So what do you want to celebrate about this past year? What can you celebrate about this past year? And then a reminder that on New Year's Day, I will be doing a, a mini retreat. This is the, the second annual one. I did this last year as well and I'm super excited to do it again. And we are going to be working on instead of a word of the year, a mantra of the year, which is a supportive statement that will help us live into our words. So the problem with a single word is that it doesn't always tell us how are we going to live into that? It doesn't always guide action, whereas a mantra can help guide action and can help us really connect a lot more deeply with how we want to feel in the new year. So the project, good morning, Sylvia, the project for New Year's Day will be some sort of art project. I haven't decided what. It will probably involve a mandala and a mantra. And I'm thinking, Trudy, about can we incorporate the essence of a, a vision board into that practice as well. And that will be from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. mountain time and I am not someone who has any need at all to stay up late on New Year's Eve and party it up that's never been a thing for me pretty much my whole life so I will be up bright and early and ready to go on New Year's Day And I'm just giving this little doll here <clears throat> from some character. And let's see. But it doesn't need a lot of character. This is just kind of a, an energy holder or a space holder. Again, I'm thinking I want it to have a word on here. I'm almost thinking it needs the word celebrate because this is the, the doll that is sort of holding the, the celebratory of energy of everything that I have learned this year. And I kind of love this little like crown 
I know the shape of it does look like a keyhole. That's funny. Yeah. New Year's Day, Trudy. New Year's Day. Early in the morning before, you know, we get busy or celebrations or festivities happen. It's generally a quiet day for me and there's no place I'd rather be than right here in my studio. This paper is so slick, it keeps, uh, it's like a little spinning wheel on here. Yes, Anne. Uh, no, sorry, you're only two hours ahead of me. So that would start at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. 9 a.m. Eastern Time. It's really early for my West Coast friends. Okay, so I'm thinking, I'm looking at this, I'm thinking some double stick tape is going to be the best way to adhere this. And I still have my nice souk wing tape here. Awesome, fun, fun, fun. And tomorrow I will have more information. I may even just uh, record a video with uh, details and what to bring and that kind of stuff. I usually have a handout. Good morning, Marianne. So I will have more information either later today or for you guys tomorrow morning about what to expect on New Year's Day. I have ideas and it always just seems to take a little while for those ideas to get clear. And in all honesty, I haven't wanted to think it will uh, think too much about work related stuff. Over the last couple of weeks, it's been a, a lovely, lovely quiet time. All right. Silly me, I put tape on the bottom down there, but I really think I want this to be kind of Oh, actually, that worked out fine. Um, and I just need to decide if I think that's going to actually stick up too much. So let's grab a couple of these other spreads here. And so if this was in the book, I don't want it sticking up too much. And I can trim it. Okay, that feels a little bit better, sort of planning ahead a little bit. And one thing I want to do before I stick this down is take a picture of these words. Yes, Marianne, good idea to just put a little piece of tape on there. But I think I want more of the doll, less of the card. And I'm not, and I'm like, it's, I'm being fussy because I'm holding on too tightly to this little spiral over here. And I can also make this card so it flips up because I really love this painty page over here. And I think maybe it's going to get a few more words or a little bit of white on it. And my goal was to stick the doll to the tag, not the, uh, just put that cover right back on that tape to stick, to put the card in, not to stick the doll to the page. Because I also want to be able to see what's on the page. All right. This is where those little fussy bits kind of take over. I love this card matched the palette I was already using as well. I love this created this little bit of a crown and I don't have to decide right now. Sometimes I just have to sit with things to decide where it wants to go and 
I might shorten up the, the paper doll just a little bit. I love things that hang out of the top of journals. So I have lots of, you know, bits that are hanging over edges, but notice that it's not, I don't like them hanging out over the bottom. So I have to decide what that's going to look like and if I'm okay with this hanging out this month or if much or if I want to trim it. So I might not decide that until I put the whole book together. Thank you, Anne. It's been a lot of fun to create and tomorrow morning will be the final day of our 21 days and I will be putting the whole book together, adding some finishing touches on things. All right, now I think what I want to do is it just really felt like this fun leafy shape needed to be on here. It feels like a shape that is all about celebration and growth as we think about what have I learned and what am I taking forward. I want to sort of get that, that imagery of growth down in there. And I'm going to start by using this as a mask and just go over it with white paint. Clean makeup sponge here. And I was going through all my stencils one day and I found these from the company Joggles. They have a lot of really fun stencils and a girlfriend gave me these and they're so much fun and I haven't used them yet. So it's nice to incorporate little bits and pieces of other people into the, the process. Okay, I'm going to hit this with the dryer and then I want to outline that shape and separate the background and the foreground. don't have over here is a nice black stabilo so I'm just going to put this right back on here so this is a uniball air micro it is one of my absolute favorite pens because it's slightly water soluble when it's wet, but once it's dry, it dries permanent. It has a really nice high flow to the ink in the pen, and it goes over the top of the acrylic paint very nicely without destroying the tip of the pen, which a lot of times you have to be very careful drawing with any nice pens, including paint markers over the top of acrylics because it will ruin the, the tips. And so this is one of my favorite for drawing over the top. Okay, so there we have our funky leaf shape on here. Thinking, thinking, thinking. maybe one more layer of white over the top of the whole thing to push that background back, make that leaf stand out a little bit more. But it also feels like maybe some words tucked in and around the page. I love that I can see some of my writing, that first layer of writing just under the edge here. So I'm just going to write, I am celebrating all that I have learned. Okay, see that nice micron does not want to go over the top of the acrylic. And I don't want to destroy my nice micron.
I love having my own handwriting on my pages. It doesn't need to be legible to anyone but me, but remember your handwriting becomes another form of mark making on the page. It doesn't even matter so much if I can read it. It only matters that I'm using, I'm taking the time and setting the intention to capture the memory of this write, paint, reflect process. And this is a slightly water soluble pencil. So I'm going to come back in one more time with that white paint over the top. So it's probably going to dissipate a little bit. But for me, again, it's that energy of getting down on the page. What do I want to remember? And it certainly feels like it has been a year of tremendous growth for me personally. Does anybody else feel that way, that this was a particular year of personal growth or professional growth? I feel like it's been a year of, of growth on both sides, both professionally as I've continued to fine tune this newest version of my 20 year career as an entrepreneur. All right, feels a little bit better. Yes, awesome, Marianne, I'm not alone. And it's been uh, a year in the world of tremendous upheaval and upset. So I think for all of us, there has been an attunement to what's happening outside of us, but I really deeply believe that peace starts within and the more at peace I am in myself, the more that I hold the energy of that peace that I can support others in finding their own peace. Okay, I'm really wanting my Stabilo pencil, which I think is over on my desk. Let's see, that's a charcoal pencil. I just feel like I, I want some more black on here. Again, just sort of creating that little bit of shadow and separation but I didn't want it to be a solid line. I wanted some softness to that shadow. So it's kind of a funny, wonky page, 100% Trudy. That's such a, a powerful mantra to be the change you want to see in the world. And if we think about Gandhi and how he modeled being peace, not being at peace, but being peace. Okay, so now I need to decide if I want to calm this page down as well, or if I'm going to birthing some newness. It really has been a time of peace for the last six months and quiet reflection. And it always takes as long as it takes. I know uh, it can be easy to think, when am I going to get out of whatever phase it is that I'm in and to learn to just give ourselves the gift and grace of that time for reflection is so important. And because I'm leaning into that symbol of the spiral, I'm going to add that spiral here to my 
little moon character. And I just ordered uh, a bunch of paper doll die cuts, like six different paper doll die cuts. And I'm super excited to play with the theme of paper dolls a little bit and see, still thinking about my January theme for the channel. All right, I'm thinking this one also wants a little bit more of that white. It's a beautiful mixed media page and it can also use some calming down. I actually have this big fat list of words. You guys should see the piles of stuff around me on the floor and I'm kind of feeling like maybe when I think about what I've learned right thinking about maybe getting some of these words down on the page as well to kind of just make it feel finished you saw great growth but a pursuer dream to go back to school. Oh, so more time with your grandkids is always, I'm sure, a, a treasured experience, Trudy. And she was lucky to have you and to have you be able to support her in that way. Okay, so this feels good. I feel like I'm bringing back that spiraling energy here thinking about the spiral as my symbol of the year, spiraling in, spiraling out, and now these pages. I'm sure it's challenging to have your adult children come home and know how to support them in all the things that they're going through. All right, so I ended up being super happy with this page here. I still have a lot of black and white paint down on the page, so I will find something to put those onto. And now this feels like she's going to stand out more because these pages aren't as busy. And I'm feeling very drawn to the word whole. And I had some great conversations with one of my friends this year about the word authentic and how it feels overdone and overused. And I think a better word to focus on in, as opposed to authenticity is to think about wholeness. And wholeness for me is one of the definitions of integrity. And so when I lean into this idea of I am whole, I think it frees me to bring all of myself to every experience that I'm engaged in. And one of the things that I have always worked hard on is if you walked into my front door tomorrow you would get the same manette that you get if you met me here online or we met at a workshop or a zoom call and to me that's about being in integrity with myself about wholeness And I think wholeness has everything to do with owning all of the aspects of ourselves, the ones we love, the ones that we don't love so much, embracing 
every part of ourself exactly as we are right now in this moment. On our the video where we talked about what do you love about yourself, I talked a lot about how self-acceptance is the path to unconditionally loving ourselves. And so I encourage people to think about this idea of authenticity through this lens of what does it mean to be whole, to feel fine exactly as you are. Like there's nothing wrong, there's nothing to be fixed right? I am whole. Is there more that I want to do? Ways that I want to grow and learn? Yes. And in our creative self-reflection bundle that's only on sale through the end of this week for $29, there's one of my favorite classes in there called Color Coded Emotions. And it's all about just really understanding the difference between feelings and emotions and how we can use color to express name and shift our feelings as well. That link is in the description of the video. And if you haven't checked it out, I encourage you to please do check that out. And getting those little pops of orange, pushing all the way back to some of that uh, oil pastel that we put down as that very first layer. So again, just this spiraling in and spiraling out. Big procrastinator, work on yourself and uh, words will be get it done. Those are great words, get it done. And also to look at what's the cause of the procrastination? Is it fear? Is it distraction? Right? You know, sometimes we think that we procrastinate out of a, like a place of uh, laziness, but you know, most of us are not lazy at all. In fact, we're just choosing where to put our energy. And so when you think about what, what do you want to put your attention and focus to, so what's the difference between where you're actually putting your attention and focus and where you say you want to. Sometimes it's about just revisiting our priorities. Okay, so this is just feeling a little bit too big. I took a picture of those words on the back so I wouldn't lose them. And I was hesitating to cut the card because the card is so pretty, but it's just time to let it go. You have your grandsons and you support your disabled daughter with her boys. Yeah. Yeah, Marianne, that's a lot. That's a lot. And those kids are so lucky to have you and to have the, the stability and the, the support that you can offer them. Okay, that feels so much better. Now it feels like this can be attached to the page as it is. It doesn't need to be I don't need to see what's on the other side. I'll just get some more of that tape down on this page. Now we're all whole as we are. You know, this country tends to, to, to look at us as we're broken and we need to be fixed, but we're not. We're whole. We have opportunities for growth and healing, right? For growth and healing, always. But that doesn't make us less than whole. Yes, we make mistakes, right? I mean, life happens. I started crafting with my kids 15 years ago. You know, it was so much fun to do it with them, and it's so good for, for them. And now they are both uh, super creative. One went to get on to get 
an arts degree. All right, we got some extra white paint on there. Maybe she's going to end up with a little bow in her hair. I'm not going to worry too much about it. So I am going to want to paint this little piece or cover that up where it's sticking up. But basically, I'm pretty happy with how this spread turned out and this reminder to honor and celebrate what I have learned and uh, how I have grown this past year and to think about what have I learned that I want to take with me into the new year. And again, this is the, the final prompt for our 21 days of intuitive art and tomorrow is going to be focused on putting the whole book together and adding any final touches to to the piece. So I'm really happy with how the whole project came out. It was a very different type of project for me. And um, I've appreciated everyone's participation and uh, sticking with me on this journey. So have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone, and I will see you tomorrow for day 21 of our 21 days of intuitive art. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye-bye.